welcome back again. You're still watching us here on The Breakfast Show. It's time to take a look at our second segment. And, of course, uh, in the holy month of Ramadan, uh, people tend to eat so much and uh, make up for all the uh, hours that have been fasted. But uh, it's important to know also uh, what you should eat and what you should drink during this month that comes during the summer uh, period. Uh, to talk more about the nutritious facts during Ramadan and what are the certain foods uh, uh, that you can have to give you high protein vitamins and uh, possibly cure for various diseases. That's what we're going to be talking about with our guest, Dr. Monia William, Professor of Plastic Surgery and Diet Control. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Williams. And of course, as you've been said now, Ramadan is in the summer this year. We only have a few hours we can eat uh, approximately from 7 p.m. until 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, how could we maintain that we get the healthy foods that could benefit our body and at the same time um, the next day we're not hungry and we're not thirsty and we're not starving. <laughs> yes, as you said, there is a very short period between iftar and suhoor. It's about eight hours. But the person is fasting about two-thirds of the day. And in the second time, we find that there is, there is hot weather. Mm -hmm. So the person has to take many important golden rules in his diet. At first, he must take lots of fluids because uh, there, there is hyperacidity in the stomach and excess fluids leads to decrease this acidity of the stomach and this leads to good digestion of food. And also uh, increased amount of fluids is very important in order to prevent sunstrokes and problems related to the hot weather. So at first, any person has to start by soups in order to decrease the acidity of the stomach. Also, there must be on table, there must be vegetables which contain lots of vitamins which are very important for any person. Also, we have to put uh, pasta and rice are the main important in our table. Uh, also, we have to, be, uh, to eat whether meat or chicken or fish. It must be grilled uh, better than being boiled or uh, uh, fried. And these are the main important points to start with. Then, as for sweets and vegetables and fruits, it's better to be uh, postponed it for one or two hours later. This is very important in order to help the stomach to digest lots of fluids and lots of food uh, which are put in. Also, my second advice is that we have to take multiple small meals from the period between iftar and suhoor. It's better than taking two main meals, one in iftar and one in suhoor. It's better to take multiple small snips because this short period helps in more absorption and more diet control for the person. Also, I'd like to speak about lots of fluids which are very important because lots of fluids are important to maintain uh, a person from being dehydrated. Dehydration during fasting long period of uh, holy month of Ramadan, uh, this leads to formation of stones inside the body. We find persons suffered at the end of the holy month uh, by suffering from multiple stones, maybe in the gallbladder or maybe in the kidney. So the main important point is to take multiple small meals, to try to uh, widen the distance between eating the meals, this is very important, and to take lots of fluids, this is also very important. Doctor, uh, you know, usually here in Egypt, and you would see that uh, everywhere, people would focus so much on eating pickles or turshi because it has salt and to make up for the salt. Uh, uh, wasted salt in the body uh, throughout the fasting, particularly as people sweat because it's hot. And then you have also people focusing so much on sweets. But what what should we eat and drink in particular that would give us uh, nutrients and not uh, 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 make us gain weight? Because a lot of people at the end of the month face uh, uh, obesity and they gain extra weight because of the amount of sugar and salt they eat. Uh, during the break time? To eat mainly, I advise to, feed, uh, to take uh, dates. Of course, dates contain one famous amino acid, which is tryptophan. Mm -hmm. And this amino acid passes through the blood brain thyroid and stimulates the brain <coughs> to secrete an important material, which is serotonin. Serotonin is a substance which helps the person to withstand fasting and also helps the stubborn fasting person in order to withstand the brain and can postpone the, and can withstand the fasting day. So it's better to take dates, dates containing about 75% of its content is sugar, which is important to, uh, for efforts during the day. Also, dates contain manganese. 
which leads to increased alkalinity of blood. And the increasing alkalinity of the blood, of blood becomes more alkaline. This leads the person to be quiet and calm during the fasting day. This is for eating. As for taking the drinks, it's better to take uh, liquorice. Uh, liquorice is very important because it contains an important substance which is called glycerine. Glycerine, this substance is very important because it leads to increased autoimmunity of the person. This glycerine, like uh, this substance, uh, uh, Japanese scientists can take a substance known as T4. T4 is a drug is taken for treatment of AIDS, which is one of the most serious diseases in this life. Also, lycosine, uh, lycorice, contains, uh, 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 is considered one of the most important anti-cancer drugs, anti-cancer food. It lies in the third level in the National Cancer Institute of the United States of America, and this lycorice helps the body to postpone uh, fasting. Also, lycorice or arsus can contain uh, magnesium, which is very important to increase alternative blood. Mm -hmm. So, for my own opinion, we have to take these types of food, such as dates, such as lycorice, which can help to increase the fasting day and uh, withstand long fasting day. What should we break our fast to so that uh, we don't get a sugar rush, for example, or um, and our body gets what it needs? Uh, it's better in order to uh, make an equilibrium for this, it's better to uh, practice sports. Sports are very important for the person. Uh, and from my own opinion, uh, op uh, in order to practice sports, there are three periods of time. It's better to practice sports. The first period is just after uh, iftar. Walking, just walking after iftar is very important because it helps to get rid of the digested food. This is number one, and it helps the person to can take to pray. The second period for sport is, is present early in the morning. And this period also is favorite for a person because he can be ready to get good day and good efforts. But yes. how can they exercise in the morning and run, for example, when they're fasting? This is very, very favorable for fasting really? person. But if w the period in which it is not very favorable is just before uh, start. This period, the person is having hypoglycemia. There is decrease of glucose living in blood. And uh, if there is massive exercise in this period, the person might suffer a lot. Mm -hmm. May end in even death of the person. There are many cases oh, wow. reported in severe exercise just before start because there is the low level of the level of the glucose in the blood. Yes, doctor. Why here uh, in Egypt or in the Arab world in particular, uh, w it's only during the month of Ramadan that you would find people cooking so many different types of food and so many different types of uh, f uh, uh, sweets. Uh, why, why do we have this uh, uh, ideology? I mean, if you're fasting, then you have to eat everything at night. <laughs> and this ideology passes, I think, because of uh, different types of sweets can help the person to take energy because there is excess glucose, excess sucrose, and so on, and sugar. And this may help the person in order to take the fasting and help him. But doesn't that shock the person, the body uh, of a person of when, when, when you don't eat all day and then you eat a lot and everything at night? I mean, how, what kind of health uh, uh, difficulties can a person face, especially if he's diabetic? or if he's got uh, uh, blood pressure problems? Uh, this is very nice, and therefore I have said in the start of my speech that we have to divide our meals into multiple small steps and multiple small uh, meats and bites. Because if we take just full, as you said, this will make a great disturbance to the stomach because all blood is coming to the stomach. And then if there is a person suffering from a cardiac problem or problem in blood supply to the brain, he might suffer a cardiac attack or my suffer hypoglycemia, or my suffer diabetic coma. All these problems is because if patients take, if any person has taken lots of food, the stomach takes lots of blood, this leads to decreased amount of blood to other organs in the body. So if the person is suffering from something in the heart, 
there may be targeted problem. If he's suffering some problem in the brain, because of this blood coming to the stomach, he might suffer from uh, uh, brain problem. So it's better for any person in order to take multiple small snips and not to take full stomach at one time. Now my last question to you, Dr. Williams, is what should we eat during suhoor time? It's better to take lots of fluid and it's better to take uh, uh, the beans, which must be uh, removed from uh, the cover of the beans because the cover of the beans contains tannic acid. Tannic acid is very difficult and it prevents absorption of the iron of the beans. So we have to remove the cover from the beans at first. Uh, so then we have to add vitamin C, which helps in absorption of the iron, and it is present in lemon, of course. And we have to add to these beans also uh, some types of oils in order to be good uh, uh, be meal for uh, olive oil, for example. Of course, of course. And of course, we have to put yogurt and take exists and full amount of uh, fluid in order to help us uh, during the, our day. And it's better to take one or two or three days, of course. Thank you very much, Dr. Samir William, Professor Samir. of Plastic, uh, William, uh, uh, Professor of Plastic Surgery and Diet Control. Thank you for joining us here on the Breakfast Show and to bring us to the end of our Breakfast Show episode for this morning. Uh, please don't forget to follow us again tomorrow and every other day from 8.30 to 10 with more on The Breakfast. So thanks for watching.